Hey guys, Peter Jordan from Lost Angler, and today we're going to look at if you have that boat in salt water, if you've got that trailer in salt water, this is a phenomenal trick that can help you extend the life of your boat, your trailer, and your whole my everything package. We're going to use Starbright Salt Off. They also make a product called Salt Away. It's not by Starbright, it's very similar. Uh, it does the same basic stuff. And we're going to use a garden sprayer and a water hose. Okay, guys. So, what we want to do is we're going to take this salt away solution we're going to put it into our garden sprayer, hose it up, and this way we can spray our trailer down, spray our boat down while we're flushing the motor. And an even better thing to do with it is when you've dumped the boat in the water and you take your trailer to go park it while you're about to go fishing, go ahead and spray this stuff down so the salt isn't baking away your boat, and your, I mean not your boat, but your trailer while your boat is out there doing boat things. So, let's open it up. And any old garden sprayer will do. Uh, this is one we had uh, at my grandmama's house, and uh, grandmama left this to us so that now we can use salt away. Salt off, excuse me, different brand. We got a straggler. Different spray tip. Anyway, so um, as you can see, we've never used this one before. Shake it. We've already shooken it. We're going to put a precise amount of salt off in here. I like to go ahead and take the time to fill about half of it up with this. This is a two gallon sprayer. I did this last year, uh, I guess in about December, or probably in the fall, sooner than that, so I guess November, October, y'all just excuse me, the gnats are terrible out here. Um, and I just now ran out of it, so I'm having to remix this and we'll be in good shape. So, in the directions on the back, it tells you nothing about how to do this at all. But what it does say is to treat items by immersion is you add two to four ounces of concentrate per gallon. So, I'm going to take that, I'm going to use one cup to this because I've got two gallons, so I've got eight ounces in, so it's one cup. I'm going to use a very precise measurement to do this. Yeah, that's about it. Okay, now we're going to finish filling it up. Get the bubbles everywhere. Y'all, excuse me, these gnats are terrible, man. Haven't had mosquitoes this year, but the gnats have been on point. All right, we got a little foam everywhere, so we're good to go. All right, now we're going to take it, close it up. Then we're going to pump up the jams. See, my wife was a 90s skater kid, or excuse me, 2000s skater kid. We're not quite that quite old yet. So she'll find that part very amusing. And for the rest of you, that just brought up Space Jam with Michael Jordan as a kid. So whatever. All right, now we're going to turn off the water and we're going to do a static flush on the motor. And while we do the static flush on the motor, I'm going to walk around, spray the boat off, spray the trailer off with the salt off solution. And then I'm going to wash the boat and rinse everything off. Now, I also like to leave, I had some uh, conventional tackle and uh, I'm going to spray that down too. And it does great. It doesn't hurt your line, doesn't hurt any of it. Uh, helps stretch the life of all that. And then in our next video, we're going to do the... Um, we're going to show you how to clean your flyer line uh, after being in salt water, or if you haven't cleaned it in a while, how to bring back that uh, finish on your fly line in a safe way that's not going to hurt your fly lines at all. So hang tight. We're going to go through this. Everyone's going to breeze through this really fast, film me do this, and then we'll go on to the next video. Okay, guys, we're going to do a static flush on our Yamaha, 
And uh, a static flush is where you flush the motor out without it running. Now, this is where you're going to do your flush attachment at right here on your Yamaha. I get people ask me, can I run my motor from right here? The answer is yes, you can. You don't want to run it for long periods of time. And Yamaha says you actually don't even need to run it. I do it for just a minute, uh, if that. And I feel like that just kind of helps flush everything out. But um, if you want to, you can do the earmuffs. Older motors, you will definitely need to use uh, the earmuff technique down here. And there's thousands of videos online showing you how to do that. So we're going to go on right here. We're going to attach this to our flush attachment. And then we're going to turn it on. And I'm going to show you the things we want to look for to know that the motor has been flushed fully. So, right now, we can see it's going all the way through the entire motor. What we want to look at, we want to make sure we're getting water through the water pump indicator. We all know the other name. I'm not going to go through it right now. Anyway, what we want to do is we want to make sure it's going from top to bottom on my motor. I can see it's coming through my lower unit on the motor. I'll trim it down a little bit more so we can make sure it's flushing. There we are. I always like to trim my motor down as much as I can. Now, can you flush your motor when it's in up position? Yes, you can. That's not a problem. So if you keep your boat in the water overnight and you want to flush your motor, uh, that's a great thing to do. If you leave it and you don't get a chance to flush it for a day or two, is it going to hurt anything? No, your Yamaha is made for salt water, so it's not the end of the world. Although, if you do put it in fresh water, you avoid the warranty. So, fast boat guys are out. I don't know. Just kidding. No, it's a great motor. Um, so... Flush this out. Now what we're looking for right here, I'm going to bring this to my mouth, taste, and I want to wait till it runs cool and no longer taste of salt water if we've just come off the water. Uh, I've let this sit overnight because I'm lazy and I'm flushing it today. So it definitely runs cool, but no longer taste of salt water. Now we did run up the Magnolia River a little bit before we uh, came in that day. So we did get in some fresh water. Uh, but it's always great to do this as a precaution. Now, we're just going to let this flush and go, and it doesn't hurt anything to let it keep going. Now, if you want to, you can go the extra mile and use the salt-off attachment. Does it do a good job? It does a phenomenal job. Now, I'm going to spray down the boat real quick, and I'm going to show you what I use to wash my boat so that I don't have issues with things like upholstery or uh, the coatings in my boat. And if you've got a fiberglass boat, things like gel coat, this is really important, so y'all hang tight. That's a ferocious guy. Sorry. Okay, so we're ready to go. Motor is flushing, salt off, ready to roll. Now we want to get into the parts of our trailer, especially these parts like the brakes, and get on in here. I mean, don't be afraid. The more the merrier. And this is also giving your motor great time to go ahead and be flushing. There's really no part of the trailer you don't want to get to at this point. And if you're really serious about doing this, you won't be that guy next season who's pissed off that his trailer rusted out from underneath him. A lot of times, one of the biggest things people face with their boats, especially if they deal with salt water, is once we put it up for the season, or put it up because we're not going to be down for a while, is our trailer just gets ate up with salt water. And the reason is, even though you may have rinsed it off, you didn't take the time to actually get the salt off. So by doing this, try to get into all those little crevices. Now, you notice we've got a good little scum line around here. We're going to do the trailer. Then I'm going to go back through and I'm going to do the boat. Okay, now, probably the most important place that always gets overlooked down here in the bilge in the engine hatch. I'm gonna hop up real quick and let April film. Uh, one thing you wanna do, actually, April, if you go stand on that side, you can kind of film down here on what I'm doing. Uh, cleaning your connections can make a big difference. Let's take a look at that real fast. All these little spots makes a big difference. And when we rinse this off later, 
We don't want to like use like jet force on it or anything. Just a nice light spray. And I promise you guys it's going to make everything last a whole lot longer down here in the salt. We don't, we shouldn't look down here and see a bunch of corrosion. Maintaining these connections right here is key. Every now and then you want to take these off, clean them off. And you want to put a little uh, dielectric, dielectric grease on it, and you'll be in really great shape. So, but going through here when you do this, take a little time, clean it, and you'll be in really great shape. Because as you can see, on a boat like this one, there's a lot you don't want salt to run rampant on. So we want to try to just take his best care of can. So we're going through here. Now, we've done this. We've salt away the boat. Let's take a look at what chemicals we want to use to clean our boat safely. Hey guys, so if I had to only pick one thing to clean my boat, the inside, my upholstery, my whole everything, it's got to be done. It's not going to hurt any of your upholstery. It's not going to hurt your gel coat. It's not going to hurt any of it. And if there's something that you can't get out with Dawn, you have a force. The Magic Eraser. It doesn't have to be Na Magic Eraser name brand, but I can tell you for a fact, these things are packed with pure baby Jesus. They will get just about anything out and they don't hurt your boat. Now, that being said, I have a lot of non skid in here and sometimes Dawn doesn't always do the trick. If I go past that, I like to use Starbright. This is Power Pine. Uh, they make a ton of non skid stuff that you can clean the boat with. This is what I like. Now, I do want to say this. You don't want to clean your upholstery with this if at all possible. So what I like to do first is clean my upholstery with Dawn dish soap and a magic eraser. Then I will clean the deck with this Starbright material. Okay. Now when I'm done, I'm going to go back through. If I want to uh, wax it out, there's tons of waxes out there. I'm a big fan of the Starbright cleaner wax. You can pick this up at Wally World. And uh, you just want to look at it and figure out what you want to do. They have a, a, uh, a light, a medium, and a heavy duty. Uh, it does a great job. Phenomenal. Tremendous. But anyway, the point is, it, if you want to take care of your boat in the sun, wax is key. If you don't want to deal with fading on your gel coat or your paint or anything like that, wax is the key. There's no substitution for it unless you're going to keep it in a covered area or you're going to keep the boat entirely covered. Now, this nasty little bottle right here, this is V-Clean. You can pick this up on Amazon. This is definitely what you want to use for your vinyl to help condition it and take good care of it. If you don't have this, one of the best things you can use is Pledge. Good old fashioned Pledge. Uh, when I was in the boat business, we called it a detail in a can, but it helps return some of the moisture to your vinyl without damaging it. So now we're going to take the time, clean the boat. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope this was helpful to you.